One of the most striking things about the film is there is a girl in the picture, there are two guys, but at the same time, the film ends with none of them ever uh, engaging in any kind of romantic or sexual engagement with each other. Was that something that was in any way a conscious decision for you to not have them get involved in any way? Never considering doing that. Mm. That was never part of the plan at all. We oftentimes see three boys, but it was just nice to have a girl who was just part of the gang, you know, and that's how it is in real life as well. Yeah, yeah. Cinematically, what has happened over the decades, the need to profess it so loudly has been become less and less. I think it's more felt now. Like Jay and Viru were going around on a bike saying you know what I mean? In some kind of way, without the singing, the three guys in Dilchata did it with the Dilchata song playing in the background. You were still saying the same thing but they were not singing it and expressing it that way. And like now what's happening is I think it's gone even like, it's become even more nuanced. Now, when you watch this film or when you watch Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara, you're experiencing the friendship. Because the time and the setting may change but I mean the core principles of what it is a friend means, those remain. You know, whether it's safe space, whether it's your comfort, whether it's the truth teller, you know, the mirror that holds you up, whether it's whatever. What is friendship? I think those things are, they remain. Someone that has your back, your chosen family. So guys, uh, thank you so much for joining. It's a big pleasure. Uh, I'm the biggest fan of everyone here. Um, and uh, I just want to start because, uh, you know, I am a content creator myself. So the film hit really, really close uh, home for me. You know, uh, I literally like created a career out of, you know, like creating content on Instagram. And, uh, and you know, like watching this film, it really just kind of uh, helped me make sense of a lot of things myself. And I, w I watched it last night itself. So, uh, great film. Thank you so much for making it. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Arjun, I was just speaking to him. He told me that he's been following the page when I had like 700, 800 followers. From five years ago. It has grown so beautifully. Like, I love what you do with it. Thank you so much, Arjun. Also, I just want to mention, um, Zoya, you probably don't know this, but you are actually the reason I have a career today. Because when I had like 700 followers, we had done a post on Bombay Talkies, mm. also on Netflix. We had done a post <laughs> on Bombay Talkies and uh, you had shared that. And oh. like you were the first basically like, you know, uh, celebrity to share a post and uh, uske baad, like, you know, my page kind of started growing exponentially. So thank you so much. Oh. Uh, and like, I, I think I, 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 I sent that to you. Yeah. I think I sent it to her. That she yeah, so thank you so much. So, yeah. Yeah, so you guys are <laughs> the reason. And you know, it's been five years and today I'm so privileged to be sitting here with uh, with you guys here today. So thank you so much. Thank you. For the film. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, because the film is about social media, it's about Instagram. Um, you guys must have seen that in the past five years that there's been this resurgence of like film content on Instagram and on Twitter, etc. Like people have kind of started taking this new route where instead of, you know, maybe applying to be, let, let's say, a critic at a media company, they've started uh, expressing their thoughts on their own. What are your thoughts about that? I would just love to know how you have seen this new kind of resurgence of film writing that has happened on social media where people have taken it in their own hands. I mean, right now it's like, with social media, I feel everyone's got their own TV channel yeah. and their own blog and their own whatever. Everyone's there to express themselves. So like with everything else, you uh, when you read something, it resonates with you. You realize that this person has some insight hmm. uh, uh, about uh, cinema or they're just a fan um, or they're just a, a, a viewer that wants to put pen their thought. It, it, the ideas in that dictate what you feel, you know. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it really, it go, it's not everyone's great and everyone's bad. I shouldn't. It's just person to person yeah. and piece to piece. Everybody wants to be a critic, but what does critiquing actually mean yeah. of a film? Is it just, uh, is it actually breaking a movie down? Is it actually making sense of the art and the craft of filmmaking? Or is it just like your personal thoughts that you're trying to display or what is it? So it mm. really resonates differently on different pieces. So yeah. it, there's no one standard answer. Yeah. Arjun, uh, you know, this film, uh, of course, it would have needed a lot of research. You know, of course, you are somebody who has lived through this um, revolution, this tech revolution of sorts, where you've seen like things changing. Uh, but did you have to do any specific kind of research in order to get certain nuances of, you know, like social media and a relationship with it, right? <clears throat> Um, I mean, a lot of it comes from the people who have interacted with, like, friends, friends of friends. But we also actually did a couple of interviews. We, we met influencers. We spoke to them. We met kids from different, like, socioeconomic backgrounds. We, we tried to do as much research as we could just to understand, like, pe like, how people are at home, you know? Like, how people engage with other people at home. 
Uh, so yeah, there was a lot, there was research that went into it, but a lot of it is also just from people we know hmm. and from our own so stories as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, would you say that, uh, when, you know, you're making a film, uh, for a younger demographic, because this film is, of course, specifically this film is a film that would definitely appeal to the younger people more because, you know, they, they are the ones who have really lived through this change. Um, do you think that when you are making a film for like a younger audience, and I would love to like loop you guys in as well, do you think that the way in which you would be approaching a film would change with the demographic in mind? Um, I don't necessarily think so. You know, the thing is that there is a section of the audience that identifies with the film, and then there will be a section of the audience that will understand a certain generation by watching this film. You know, so the film really is made for anyone. You know, not every film reflects you personally in, in, in that character, but you get an understanding of another world, another culture, another age demographic, another generation, that can happen. So um, I would imagine that when, when Arjun had this thought, I would imagine that when Zoya, Rima and Nehtahim sat down and developed it further, um, I don't think they restricted it to saying that, okay, you know, only this generation is going to be uh, interested in this film. Because I mean, mm. when we watch films about or shows about you know, cultures that we have nothing to do with. Right. We're still interested in them because we learn yeah. something, you know, from them. So I think that would apply to, to film as well. Yeah. Hima, what do you think? Yeah, also, I don't think, you know, social media is not exclusive to, like you're saying, a young adult uh, audience. Everybody right. uses it. And I think yeah. that the the fallout and the pressures, the pros, the cons, it applies to everybody. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I really don't think it's restrictive. Hmm. And as to your earlier question, I mean, no, I, I don't think you write thinking this is for young people, so right. try and be young about it. No, I, I don't <laughs> think it works like that. Right. You know, you try, it's not just about like trying to be young about it, but maybe, about it. yeah, maybe you'd be a little more careful about, you know, doing certain things, writing certain things. No, I, I'm, I'm sure, I, mean, I don't want to speak on, on anyone's behalf, but the fact is you want to address their issues. That's what you do, you address the issues that the, the, the characters that you're seeing in the film, the age that they play, the lives that they need. When you're born into a world where social media is not something that you inherit as you grew up, but you were just born into it, it's just present. So your life will be very different. Your understanding of how you communicate, what that means to you, mm. is going to be very different. And for a generation that, that did have that, mm. you know, when they were growing up, and they were born without the, uh, without the Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, constantly being accessible to yeah, them, yeah. Um, they'll get an understanding, you know, from watching this film as to what it is that kids of today are kind of feeling about this stuff and what it makes them experience and, and kind of emotionally go through. Yeah. Arjun, uh, I mean, today, especially the time when you will see a lot of filmmakers around the world that they are um, trying to make films set in like, like a past time only so that they can avoid the use of technology in it. You know, like a lot of filmmakers around the world are trying to do that and it's like a trend that's being studied also because a lot of people, they just want to kind of avoid the usage of phones because it becomes such an easy, you know, plot, plot point. A lot of like difficult plot points can be just resolved by the use of a phone. So instead of that, you are making a film literally about phones. Uh, so did you consciously, were, try were you consciously trying to like limit the usage of phones and the use of screens on uh, in your film? And how difficult was it to do that in a film that was literally about phones? No, I think we honestly just embraced it. We just embraced how we are today. And that includes our relationship with our phones. And in terms of like actually shooting a phone, if it's done right, it can be beautiful, right? Like the light, that's the glow that's emitted from, mm. from it. Like for me, the reference is like when you look at a movie and there's a character riding on a parchment and there's a candle light. You know, so the, that was a reference for how we wanted the phone to feel and look. Um, so, so there was no, honestly, we just kind of embraced it and try to make it as beautiful as possible. Even the cutaways to the characters and you see like what they're seeing on their phones, like those cutaways, that, that was, we tried to make it as aesthetic as possible. Hmm. One very interesting thing uh, in the film, Adarsh's character, every character is very interesting, very layered, but especially his character, you know, he's a troll. But at the same time, you have tried to create this or you have tried to evoke empathy for him and you've tried to kind of go into how he gets to that point. Was this an attempt for you guys to kind of um, empathize with trolls yourself and kind of make your own peace with the experiences that you have had? 
I mean, I don't think he's a professional troll. Yeah, just like you make that distinction. It's not a professional yeah. troll. No, but at some point he yeah. does. And it was, I think, an attempt to look at how maybe this can also, you know, a person doing something like that is coming from a sad space. You know, where he he's having issues with himself and maybe his self-image and, uh, you know, where he wants to be and where he is now. And he's a bit dissatisfied with those kind of things. And that is turning into some kind of negative thing coming out, mm. you know. So we were trying to explore that. Right. Yeah. Ritesh, uh, I mean, you know, this is definitely a film that um, is trying to, uh, even though there's not a conscious effort to do that, but at the same time, this is a film that you can take away a lot of things from the film, you know. According to you, for you personally, what is the purpose of cinema? What is the purpose of film? <laughs> cinema? <laughs> oh. I mean, you know, I think... Uh, <laughs> no, I think you obviously have to be responsive, responsible about what you're saying, right? Yeah. Because like I said earlier, that you know, it's a popular medium. You do have a chance of influencing people. But if you do it in the right way and you're responsible, you can bring certain things through cinema because people have your attention, which um, is something which you need, which can spark a conversation, right? So it's important to address and bring those issues to the forefront without it being preachy. Because the minute you start making it preachy, like even this film, you'll go back home with, I mean, it is engaging, it is entertaining, but it leaves you with a certain thought. Yeah. And it left me with a certain thought as well when I read it the first time and after seeing it, and I've shared that about what it left on me. So I think all of us here, I mean, we have a lot of opportunity of, you know, saying stuff to people and obviously engaging with them, but you have to be responsible about it. So I think that's what cinema can do. You know, you can spark conversations, not influence people's decisions, but bring them to a point to start recognizing stuff what is happening. Can, can I ask the same question to you as well? How do you see uh, cinema and you know what, its purpose in our lives and in, in society? You know, to just kind of throw back to a previous question, I think we're talking about the film having so much about social media and phones and technology, but I think at the core of it, it's it's about something that's so universal across different generations, which is friendship, which is ambition, which is. Uh, you know, a sense of wanting to belong, finding yourself, maybe even greed to a certain extent. So there's just so much of emotion that you kind of cover. And I think he set it at a time when social media is so rampant, which is why like, I don't realize how old I am till I, till I feel that Dilchata is 23 years old, you know. Yeah, true. So until then, I'm like, oh, this is me. And I think everyone felt like that even previously when we spoke. So I think uh, cinema has got to do that. You've got to feel like this is my story. It's a story that that I find myself in some way. And yes, there's a huge responsibility that all of us understand and kind of walk with. But besides that, it's got to be entertaining. It's got to make you feel something. Good, yeah. bad. I'm not encouraging the news of the world to go out and troll, but mm. it's got to make you feel something. And I think the minute we put a piece of art out there, whether it's a film, whether it's a series, just to have reactions to it, good, bad, ugly, we learn from someone, we only get better. But yeah, I think uh, we carry a lot of responsibility when we're telling stories and we're yeah. hoping they elicit some amount of emotion, some amount of reaction, because we're making it for people. One of the most striking things about the film is, of course, you know, the fact that there is a girl in the picture, there are two guys, but at the same time, the film ends with none of them ever uh, engaging in any kind of romantic or sexual engagement with each other, which is, I think this is the first time this has happened where like both, like all of them were straight and yet, uh, you know, like nothing really happens between them. So um, was that something that was, you know, any, in any way a conscious decision for you to not have them get involved in any way? Uh, and uh, was there ever a point where you were considering doing that as well? Um, never considering doing that, well, to be very honest. That was never part of the plan at all. Um, I think it just, it just needed to be natural and it just seemed fun, like, to have amongst the... Like, we always see, th we, we oftentimes see three boys, but it was just nice to have a girl yeah. who's just part of the gang, you know, and that's how it is in real life as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that both yeah. love Twink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, buddies. Yeah. 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 A lot of uh, yeah. friends. Yeah. Uh, they were buddies. They were, yeah. They were, yeah. But yeah. we all have that in our lives. We exactly, have yeah. friends that have been friends, remain friends, and there's never been, it's never crossed, yeah, yeah it's never crossed over to anything else, and, and it's, stayed true to that and I think that that doesn't get reflected somehow and yeah. yeah but yesterday a lot of people after the screening were bringing up this thing which was the same that you have three of them sharing an apartment and yeah. living and there is no like a love triangle there yeah so, and it's just pure friendship and just 
having each other's back and they genuine care for each other yeah. like adarsh's yeah. character is so caring towards anna's yeah. character and i think kahin na kahin ko lagta hai ki shayad ho sakta hai ki baad mein lage ki you know that he probably has something and nothing ha- happens in that for me that that's the biggest takeaway of the film but it's just pure friendship yeah man yeah i can only even care for the other person yeah yeah platonic friendship yeah. exists ek ladka ek ladki dost ho sakte hain yeah <laughs> Um Fran how do you think we we were on the topic of friendships from like the early days when we had films like Shole and we had the friendship of Jain Viru and films like Yarana Dostana of that time to Din Chahta Hai Zidan MD to Khoem Ka how do you think just how friendship has changed on on screen how friendship has evolved on screen and second matlab wo bolte hai na ki matlab generally ki just the way that romance is happening uh has changed in the way that how free people have become compared to uh before etc do you think that generally also you feel when you see younger people that friendship itself has changed uh no i don't think friendship in its true sense has changed at all uh, but i think cinematically what has happened over the decades i think the need to profess it so loudly has probably become less and less you know i think it's more felt now uh. and less of like you don't have to constantly express it like we spoken about this like like Jay and Viru were going around on a bike saying you just need to be going you know what i mean yeah and in in some kind of way without the singing the three guys in dilchata i did it with the dilchata song playing in the background you know so you were you were still saying the same thing but they were not singing it and expressing it that way right. and like now what's happening is i think it's gone even like it's it's become even more nuanced and even more layered you know what i mean like so like now when you watch this film or when you watch zindagi na milegi dobara you know what i'm saying you're like just you're experiencing the friendship and all that people don't have to do is watch the film I mean, you, you the, yeah because like the time and the setting may change but i mean the core principles of what it is a friend means those remain you know whether it's your your safe space whether it's your comfort whether it's the truth teller you know the mirror that holds you up whether it's whatever that what is what is friendship i think those things are they remain someone that has your back your chosen family you yeah. know that's a friend So that hasn't changed. Yeah, that's not just. Yeah. You know, somebody who's mm-hmm. going to tell you the truth. Yeah. That hasn't changed. Another I think very interesting thing for me just with respect to the friendship is that all the friendship films that have come before this also including Dil Chahta and ZMD um that this is a film where characters are much grayer compared to the compared to these previous friendship films and this is like in a way this is going to be like the defining friendship film of our of this generation, you know. So uh, do you think that the audiences today in general have become more accepting of like much grayer characters? Yeah, definitely. And I think what Arjun has done with uh, the relationships in Khogam ka, you know, between the three leads uh, to me it's a lot more nuanced and authentic. So, hmm. yeah. I think it reflects uh you know, like Farano saying earlier uh you know, friendship itself has an origin. Friendship is the same. but the relationship between jay and viru is very different from the relationship between uh, these three people hmm. some of it is the time some of it is the kind of films that were being made in each yeah. uh, era but uh, and it just look at the express yeah that doesn't mean the times have changed yeah. you know like how people people are uh, navigating different things yeah. at different stages yeah. and uh, that's just it Yeah, I mean, you know, in in this film where all three of them, uh, you know, they are the protagonists. ऐसा नहीं है कि कोई भी antagonist है. मतलब तीनों protagonists हैं. पर Adarsh's character takes a really unexpectedly great turn. You know, also Sidhan's character is, मतलब in the simplest of words, he's like a fuck boy. You know, but you have tried to again find empathy for a character like him as well, and you do that quite successfully. You know, so um, yeah, I think uh, it it was nice to see that. you still are trying to create empathy with these characters but they are much grayer compared to the kind of characters that we used to see before true yeah so on an ending note because right now like you know this is a room where i'm sitting with some filmmakers who like i have grown up like you know being super inspired by uh so what does happiness mean to you what does happiness mean to you yeah oh wow interesting um happiness means to me um seeing people in my life who i genuinely care about really happy. it is a difficult one i don't know uh, again like like for answering you happiness to me is the people that you love and care about are okay uh the animals that you love my dogs so i have dogs for other like you know i just want everyone in my life to be okay yeah. and actually not just my life i i wish there was a little more peace and uh 
tranquility in the world. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I think also just finding contentment mm -hmm. and like learning to be content and finding joy and happiness in the small things as well as the big things. So. My children. Uh, I am. Just <laughs> simple and to the point. That's the first thing you came to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, I think it's a decision. I think it's uh, sometimes very tough to take that option when there's something else going on. But you got to push for it, pursue it. And uh, uh, just always uh, look at what you have. Look at the brighter side. And I think happiness comes to me at least when I can give some out. Because it returns to me in, a, in other ways. Yeah. So I think when you what you put out and what you get back, that makes me feel good. I think just being around my friends and family and seeing them smile makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, on that note of smiling, uh, that's what they show. What makes he happy? Uh, you know, doing awesome. interviews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so much. And uh, I loved, really, really liked the film. Uh, Arjun, so happy for you. Congratulations. So much. And uh, and yeah, this was Harshavan from Yomzo Cinema. Signing off. I never do this. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.